I was five years old when I realized that I was gay. One of my friends told me that I'm her favorite storyteller. Can you imagine? And I do love telling stories and sharing secrets and having moments. That's why we're here. Are you guys ready for my most revealing, most truthful, most scandalous story yet? It's not that serious. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, hello. How are you? My name is Malcolm Soares. I upload videos on YouTube every Friday. We're usually discussing fashion. We're talking about beauty. We're trying products. We're having moments. First, click the subscribe button because you're only one button click away from being part of the moment. Today, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. I'm coming to you raw, unfiltered, bright-eyed, and bushy-browed. I'm in my robe so I can feel at least a little bit luxurious. Ugh, something's going on with my contact, so if my eye gets a little bit red, don't mind me, it's just a cyclops. Ew. In case you weren't aware, in case you missed the moment completely, I am a blatant homosexual and proud of it. So I get asked all the time how I knew that I was gay, which is always an interesting question to me because I don't ask people how they knew they were straight. I guess it's just a fascinating question for people to know. I am by no means a spokesperson or speaking on behalf of every black gay person. I'm just gonna tell you guys my experience and my moment of revelation. So it all goes back to kindergarten, as it always does. I was five years old when I realized that I was gay. I grew up in a very small suburban town in the majestic garden state of New Jersey. The first time I remember having a crush on a person of the same sex as me was in kindergarten. I was five years old, my teacher's name was Mrs. Lafayette, and she, I think that was her name, and she was lovely. She ended up getting pregnant. All of my teachers growing up in grade school ended up getting pregnant and had to go on leave for like the whole school year. Anyway, I had a fabulous kindergarten class. My best friend's name was Todd, but there was this one boy. I don't know where the feelings came from or where they started. I just remember like getting little butterflies. Like as a little boy, I remember having all of those crush emotions that any little kid does. His name was Casey and he was bald. He was very Caucasian. He had a mole on his cheek and he had these really thin duck lips and he was a little bit pudgy. He had a really round face and I just thought he was the cutest thing in the world and I wanted to put him in my back pocket. You know, you have boy meets world and girl meets world. I want boy meets boy or guy meets guy because it's, it's the same kind of progression. Anyway. I decided, since I had a crush on this boy, that I needed to do what any five-year-old would do. Torment him and torture him until he noticed me. That's all I wanted. I wanted to be noticed. I wanted his attention. I just wanted him to know my name. I don't think Say My Name by Destiny's Child was out yet at that point. I made an executive decision that in order to capture this young man's attention, my opportunity was going to be recess. I couldn't pass him a note in class. That would be too weird and freak him out. I couldn't tell anybody else to vouch for me because I was pretty sure that what I was feeling was definitely not normal. So I'm like, okay, let me take my recess opportunities to just try to play with him. Not in a weird way. You little nasty. You know, let's go to the swings. Let's slide on the slide. When you get released for recess in kindergarten, you have some of the other classes outside on the pavement and they line you up by class in single file lines and they would release every line one by one. I'm pretty sure he was in my class. Girl, when they would let my class go, I distinctly remember I would just beeline for Casey every single time. It never failed. Once they called my teacher's name for us to go, I just started sprinting, just chasing Casey around the playground, just chasing him. <laughs> I didn't know what my intentions were. I didn't know what kind of games I was trying to play. I just knew I was going for Casey. That was my goal. That was my end game. For what? I don't know. I just wanted to get some attention. Jesus. <laughs> 
full circle. That was my plan. Every day, chase Casey until we get to have some kind of interaction, some kind of moment. One day, you know, it was typical routine. It was recess time. I'm waiting like Sonic the Hedgehog to run off onto the playground. And I feel like usually I would either wear out or he would, and I would just let him go. I'd be like, oh, okay, he's not having it today. But this one day, I wouldn't stop until he stopped the acceleration of it all. So I was still going and he stopped and he turned around and he was looking at me like a dragon was about to burn him to a crisp. And I ran up to him, totally kissed him on the lips. I don't think anybody else saw it. We had this huge playground. So we were just out in this big field and it was really quick. And I just remember him like clenching up and being Poor thing was probably terrified. It wasn't like this long, you know, Beauty and the Beast type of kiss moment, but it was like this peck that just totally freaked him out. Who knows if he even remembers this happening, but I can't even imagine the level of potential trauma <laughs> that's planted in a moment like that. But for me, that was a really crazy moment. And I know a lot of people kind of struggle with their sexuality until they get older in terms of just acceptance. I feel like for me, it actually helped me in a weird way because from that moment on, I knew what I liked. Like I had crushes on boys, you know, ever since then really. As early as I can remember even watching television, like Eddie Winslow on The Family Matters, girl, Eddie was everything to me. Now, when Stefan stepped out of that machine, he was everything to me too, but Eddie Winslow was the tallest piece of dark chocolate that I had ever seen. And I was really young watching Family Matters. Uncle Jesse on Full House, heartthrob sensations. Like I had crushes on all of them. I still have a lot of celebrity crushes. Leave your celebrity crushes down below in the comments too. What am I talking about? I didn't know how to define it. I didn't know what the word was, but I knew what I liked from then on, like first grade, second grade, third grade. I remember always having crushes on the cool boys or the jocks or the misfits. Like I did not discriminate. I had crushes on the pen pals that we were writing in Vietnam or wherever they were. When we got assigned pen pals, I wanted it to be a boy so bad just so that I could start getting my pen game up. Like I wanted to be able to, you know, get my vibe together. So in second grade, I told this girl that we would kiss in the closet after class because she had kind of a little weird crush on me too. I, I probably traumatized this girl too, Jesus. I think I like wrote her a note and I was like, let's meet in the closet after class, like right when class lets out, because we only have a little bit. And she agreed to do it. I think she sent me a note back and checked off yes. And then the end of the day came and I completely flaked. Like I was the biggest frosted flake ever. I obviously didn't come out to her in the second grade and explain to her why I did not show up. I do remember the more that I thought about it and thought about the potential of actually doing it I realized like I do not want to kiss this girl and she was so funny like I just love funny people I attract to funny people very easily and I guess her personality just really attracted me to her that way but I was really wanting her to be like a good Judy I'm pretty sure she was crushed about that but I'm also positive that she got over it so by sixth grade I kind of tried it again with a friend of mine. She was fly, she was funny, she was mad cool, she was popular like me. I was like, hmm, maybe this could be like a little crush moment. We had a lot of similar interests like Britney Spears music, dancing to Spice Girls. I was just one of the girls, you know? My teacher in sixth grade definitely knew what vibes I was throwing because she used to let me use her cucumber melon hand lotion. Honestly, that was the last time that I even attended Tempted or tried to entertain a crush on a girl. After that, I was just over it. Like by seventh grade middle school, I had crushes on all these guys, but the problem was people weren't just coming out, you know, especially kids our age. Like sexuality was barely talked about. If you don't know this about me, I'm also a PK, I'm a preacher's kid. That was a struggle too, because I didn't know how to navigate the difference between what the Bible said and what I had heard about marriage and homosexuality from the Bible. <laughs> Why am I putting the Bible in quotes? I didn't know if I was about to be damned to hell or if I was God's special child. I didn't really know how to 
how to compartmentalize the religion aspect of it, but I did know my feelings and I always knew that I was gay. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people can't say or maybe just won't say. That's an entirely, entirely different, different video. video. But yeah, my journey really started in kindergarten and I call it a journey because even through all those years, like a lot of people tell me, that it's great that I knew so young, you know? I, I never set out to, to marry a woman just because of, you know, the church or just because of societal expectations. I never got into a fallen relationship and had to break a girl's heart. Like, I never had to go through any of those deep things, but what I did have to go through was my own personal acceptance of who I was, and not just about being gay, but also just the type of man that I wanted to be and that I felt myself becoming. I was playing basketball. I was very good at basketball. That identity became such a huge part of me that I couldn't balance what I felt like were two identities, right? So I would just pick and choose my moments where I could, you know, be one of the girls and say something funny and kiki. But like, if one of my teammates comes into the party, you know, I got to keep it like together, contained. It's mentally tormenting for somebody to have to do that. I mean, you're literally splitting yourself into two. So that's where the work really had to come in for me. <laughs> I'm very thankful that I knew that I was gay at a very young age, but I'm also always trying to make sure that I remember how that felt growing up not fully being myself because to be honest if i could go back i'd be doing that britney spears choreography in the hallways of the school but again i was that person i had to make sure nobody was looking nobody was watching nobody would catch me doing anything too girly or too feminine even all through high school towards the end of high school i started getting more comfortable with my femininity if you want to call it that i started taking dance classes like sierra had just came out with goodies like i was just ready to go like you know I'm thankful for my journey. I'm thankful for my process. I always say just, you know, ask people, how do you identify? And what was that like for you? Because everybody has a story and everybody has a journey and not everybody has the capabilities and the resources to, you know, set up a camera and a ring light and a microphone and share that story. But I wanted to because it's my story. So if you enjoyed the story time, if you learned something, if you picked up any information, if you heard something that you've never heard before, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, if you're still curious about anything, I would love to answer questions in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you believe in being your own definition of beautiful and being authentically yourself. That is like totally the vibe of me and my channel and the energy that I want to put out into the universe. Don't be ashamed of the interest that you have, of what your passions are. If it doesn't seem like something that's going to be acceptable because of your gender or because of your race or ethnicity, it's acceptable to you. You have to accept what you like and who you are and who you like and who you love. I really hope that Casey never sees this video. I will absolutely be mortified. Probably not as mortified as him though when I planted a big one on him on the playground. <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I hope that you guys enjoyed this story time. I think I only did one other story time on my channel from Fashion Week. That was an interesting story. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click subscribe, seriously. Until the next video, until the next experience, and until the next moment.